Genetic cloning is a process that has been explored for over 30 years. Its continued exploration has led to advancements in the medical field, including the development of stem cells. The cloning of Dolly the sheep proved that it was possible to take somatic cells from a specific adult animal and use those cells to make a genetic copy of that adult animal. This was a huge breakthrough in genetics. Cloning is the process of making an identical copy. It started back in 1928 when Hans Spiemann successfully cloned a salamander using nuclear transfer. Nuclear transfer is a process where a cell's nucleus is fused with the membrane of an egg cell. This process is the foundation of modern day cloning and regenerative medicine. As time moved on, other reptiles and amphibians were cloned, and new species were tested. However, the prospect of cloning a mammal was still the goal, as a successful mammalian clone could hopefully lead to organ growth transplants and disease treatment. After thousands of tests, the first successful mammalian clone using embryonic cells occurred in 1984. Although this was an advancement, its reliance on an embryo, which required a fertilized egg, made it an impractical long-term cloning solution. If you do that nuclear transfer from a cell like an embryo, then it hasn't differentiated that far versus uh, an adult differentiated somatic cell, which is more restricted developmental potential, right? But the fact is you can still take that nucleus and you can erase those epigenetic marks and reprogram it. Finally, after 12 years of continuous research and after 277 cell fusions implanted into 13 different sheep, Dr. Ian Woolmitt and his research team at the Roslyn Institute successfully cloned Dolly, the first mammal successfully cloned using somatic cells. It began to occur to me that it would be possible to use cloning as a way of introducing precise genetic changes. Dolly was announced to the world on February 22, 1997 to a frenzy of media attention. Dolly captured the world's imagination and allowed the world to hear about science. Well, there's two main things that Dolly did. One was it brought cloning into the sphere of sort of large mammals. So cloning had been done with mice previously to Dolly. But that had been cloning done with embryonic cells as the donor nucleus. The thing about Dolly that was new was that it used this adult somatic cell as the donor nucleus. Many researchers began to feel that a mammal's genome and genetic blueprint were packaged differently and that cloning them would be impossible. Dolly's creation proved that was all wrong, stated biologist John Gurdon. Additionally, her birth proved that specialized cells could be used to create an exact copy of the animal they came from. Dolly broke a genetic barrier in history. Her clone, which used somatic cells, was something no other clone had used prior. This opened up a lot of possibilities in both biology and medicine, including the development of induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPS cells. iPS cells are derived from somatic cells that have been reprogrammed back into a pluripotent state. This enables the development of an unlimited source of any type of human cell. The key element of iPS cell development is that the genome is reprogrammed, similar to how Dolly's DNA was reprogrammed when she was cloned. Stem cell biologist and Nobel laureate Dr. Shinya Yamanaka was the first person to successfully develop iPS cells. According to Yamanaka, Dolly the sheep told me that nuclear reprogramming is possible even in mammalian cells. So there's something called the Yamanaka factors. Um, and there are a series of genes that make a, a set of proteins, and those proteins are actually really critical for making, uh, for inducing a pluripotent stem cell state. Uh, Yamanaka, the guy who developed uh, induced pluripotent stem cells, the reason he even tried that experiment was because of Dolly being successful. 
And I don't think he would have even undertaken that effort if Dolly hadn't been successful. IPS cells can be used for therapeutic purposes. It can be created into islet cells to treat diabetes, blood cells to treat leukemia patients, or neurons to treat neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. According to Yamanaka, this technology has a remarkable potential for use in cell therapy, drug screening, and personalized medicine. There are many applications. The first application is regenerative medicine. We can make many types of cells from iPS cells, including neural stem cells, uh, cardiac myocytes, and uh, pancreatic cells. So uh, by transplanting those cells, we're hoping to treat patients suffering from uh, Parkinson's disease, spinal cord injury, heart failure, and also uh, diabetes. In 2009, an extinct animal was resurrected by cloning for the first time, though the clone died minutes after birth. In addition, Dolly has had a big impact on agriculture. Farmers can clone animals to produce consistent and higher quality animal products. By doing this, farmers can introduce the natural positive characteristics into the herd quickly. One of the main things we wanted to do was to be able to produce literally thousands of identical offspring and cloning gave us that opportunity. There is also a link between the Dolly experiments and CRISPR's genome editing technologies. Both are breakthroughs of enormous magnitude and could help researchers figure out ways to repair damaged or diseased tissue. Dolly in terms of genetics has has given, actually, if you wanted to move into, actually now if you combine that with CRISPR, right, you can take, you can take uh, animals that are, have differences, right, that have genetic differences, and you can take their uh, somatic nuclei from, from each different animal, and then you can see if, that, if those differences between those adult animals impact the ability to actually make a new animal. Cloning has its downsides but Dolly helped us understand its limitations. Clones have a short lifespan and live in a very restricted environment in order to prevent exposure to everyday diseases. Embryo transfer uh, all of a sudden now had a detrimental effect and it killed the commercial interest. Another major problem with cloning is that it causes long-term health defects. This can be seen by Dolly's development of lung cancer and severe arthritis five years after she was cloned. Furthermore, cloning has a very low success rate. It took 277 tries to successfully clone Dolly. Lastly, cloning could also be seen as an ethical issue and manipulating genes could have unforeseen consequences. Cloning in particular is just another technology that we use, like any other technology, within the media and within, you know, certain segments, people talk about it as if it's this looming threat. So, you know, I think it does raise ethical questions. I just don't know that the threat is actually there. To prevent such consequences, attempts should be made to create an appropriate legal ethical system and an approved comprehensive law. Manipulation of human DNA has taught us an enormous amount. More importantly, new treatments are coming forward for diseases for which at the present time there is no treatment, like the mitochondrial disease, like macular degeneration. You may want to think that by the time you get to be my age, it will benefit you greatly if these diseases are being cured. Dolly's cloning has furthered our knowledge of both stem cell research and medical treatment processes. This cloning has provided insight into the impact cloning can have on agriculture. Although this beneficial cloning was faced with backlash and was ethically questioned by the public, in the end, the field of genetics and our views on genetic treatment have drastically changed as a result of Dolly.